All right, so here at Speed Nation, these guys are getting in some, they're getting a lot of new boosts. They got VR1s here, they've got assaults. I think they even got a few RMKs. These are good dudes, they've been really great. Even though I didn't buy the sled from them, they get my recalls done. I'm really impressed with that. Uh, I'll definitely be ordering from these guys in the future, but just got the fuel line recall complete. I think I've got, let me see how many miles I got on this sled now. Uh, 814 miles. Uh, I'll typically let it warm up and hit about 100 degrees before I start it up. But, you know, one year ride review, I would say. Um, had a slight oil leak. They installed a new oil tank um, on, the, on this side uh, for the oil reservoir. A new primary clutch because I was a little complaining. Some of the other people were complaining about um, some issues and I was noticing a sound. So new primary, new oil tank. But this thing rips, man. The 850 boost is bad. And what's amazing is, is how loud it is stock. This is a stock can exhaust, and it's got some serious gerbil. Another thing I really like about the Boost are these vanity lights. They look so cool. I also installed the punch lights on this thing as an upgrade. Um, did the, I think that's the one up, I forgot the name of the company that makes the scratchers, but those scratchers are really slick. It's got this little holder that holds it in place pretty much a requirement if the truck conditions are not absolutely ideal with the two inch paddle. Um, my, and, and if you look at my high facts, after 800 miles, I mean, look at these things. I mean, there's hardly anywhere if you go down the sides of these. So I think the investment's worth it. Engine runs cooler. Um, I won't get over 125 degrees going down the trail, but pretty cool sled. I'm actually gonna sell it because I'm not gonna have much chance this season to ride. New job, got a lot more responsibilities and unfortunately just won't be able to spend the time riding like I'd like to. But you know, for someone looking for a, you know, the new boost, I think this is not a bad option. It's a pretty sweet sled. The, the colors are really cool. I, I, I do enjoy that, um, but it's a nice sled. I'm just gonna be riding one of these old uh, backups I've got for the season between a wife and I, just something something to ride if we get to go even once or twice and then uh i'll reassess the situation for 2025 i like the new riot i think the new articat riot sorry i like the new um articat catalyst chassis i think it's pretty freaking sweet i'd love to get one of those i like the looks of it and uh i'm an articat fan i, I used to kind of not be impressed by that brand but the more I get to knowing Articats and long-term reliability, I've been impressed. I mean, that that sled right there, that Articat trailer, that's a 2013 with 7,500 miles on it. Original motor, original primary. The only reason it has a new secondary is because it didn't do its preventative maintenance correctly. Stripped out the threads and the helix and had to throw a new secondary on it. But I just rebuilt the suspension and the skid just to get prepared for the riding season. But I mean, that's pretty good reliability. If you think about it, 7,500 miles and 10 years old. So I don't know. I think uh, Skidoo, I'm sorry. I think uh, Cat makes a pretty good sled. And I like Polaris too. I mean, I think the Matrix chassis is awesome. I love the riding position. I think Polaris has always done a great job with like leading the industry as far as like new technology. Um, I think Skidoo used to have that, but it seems like Polaris has done a really good job leading the industry as far as in uh, generational chassis changes, riding position, and uh, and even just like the display. I mean, you look at the display and the different features, this is, this is incredible. Let's see, let me go back. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really incredible setup. I, I love their displays and everything. But anyhow, pretty sweet sled. Glad the recall's all complete. One less thing to worry about this season. So if you're thinking about getting a Matrix chassis boost, I'd recommend it. You know, I, I think it's a well-built engine and I haven't had any turbo issues. I mean, I know other people have no filed spark plugs. This is a bad machine. I mean, it, the capability of this thing is nuts. I won't push it to the limits this thing will is capable of, but it, it can take it if you want. This out guys, some 24 boosts coming in. The 2024 Polaris Patriot Boost. This is the VR1 850 Turbo. They got a few in stock. Here's a standard 146. Let's see, see what else they got here. Yep, two other, two other boosts. Looks like this one's got the two inch paddle. That's got the one and a half inch. Yep, both boost. Looking awesome. Nice, I like that gray, that looks really sharp. 
And see, yeah, they got another. Here's another 146 boost. And then a 137. Huh. Looks awesome. I really like these colors. <clears throat> Wonder what other changes they made for 24. Huh. Pretty sure one of mine is in here, actually. These are... Oh, well, that's an XC-137, XC-137. Mine's somewhere in a crate over here somewhere. To sum it up, I'm pretty happy with the Patriot Boost. I definitely make the recommendation to somebody. I really had pretty minimal issues for the first year of this technology. I'm going to be posting more videos of snowmobiling and getting ready for the season soon. Thanks for watching.